Right, so let's create a new folder called jQuery. And in here, let's create another folder called, uh, called uh, tic-tac-toe. Instead of the tic-tac-toe folder, we're going to create a, yet another folder called images where we're going to put uh, two bitmap images, one for the X player and one for the O player. So let's create a uh, two bitmaps. One, uh, uh, we're going to call it um, X.BMP and the other we're going to call it uh, o.bmp. Now uh, the web really prefers another type of image types which is uh, PNG not BMP but uh, let's uh, use paint Windows paint to create the BMP and later uh, convert them to uh, PNG. Uh, so let's uh, have a nice thick black line to draw a circle for the O player. Let's uh, save that uh, normally as BMP and then let's save it again save as now and let's select now PNG PNG so it uh, saves at o.png PNG is a, uh, a uh, another type of image that uh, is preferable uh, for web pages now let's create the X player again which is now with a line two lines one across like this and the other one going up there we go now it's an X let's save that again just save as a, and that creates a BMP and let's save as where we can select the type of image let's select PNG let's say we're done we have the two images now let's go back to the tic-tac-toe directory and in here we're going to create a, uh, a web page called tic-tac-toe.html Let's open it with our favorite uh, text editor. As always, I like to use uh, SciT. And let's uh, make this big so that you can see what I'm doing. As always, I start my web pages with one big title at the top with an H1 tag. And I'm paranoid, so I'm always saving my work. I don't want to lose anything I do. To create the, uh, the board where we're going to play, we're going to use a table tag uh, that's going to have uh, three rows and three columns. Uh, let's see, let's create our first row with a TR tag. There it is. And inside of the, this row, we're going to have uh, three columns. We're going to use the uh, TD tags to create each one of the columns. So here's the first row. We're going to copy the first row. We're going to paste it two times more. So now we have three, three columns. Let's uh, name the first row. Let's call it row one. There it is. And we're going to call each one of the cells with unique names, unique identifiers. So the first one we're gonna call it um, cell 11 because it's uh, row one, column one. The one uh, next to it we're gonna call it cell 12 because it's row one, column two. The third one right next to it we're gonna call it cell 13 because it's row one, column three. Let's uh, say that. Now that we have the first row, we're gonna we can copy this and paste it several times to have the next following rows. So let's uh, now paste it. There it is. Here this is row two now, and so the the next cells uh, here are gonna be um, row two, column one, row two, column two, row two, row th uh, column three. Let's paste it again. Let's change this to row three, and let's change the cells number accordingly. So now I'm going to set the border of the table to be border 1, otherwise the borders um, are invisible until you have any content inside of the table. So let's uh, make the border once so we can see something. Let's uh, double click it and open the page and we'll see that um, there it is. So this table has borders but has no content whatsoever. Let's uh, start to style the the table, the board, the uh, board, the plain board, so that it has some attributes such as widths and heights. Uh, if you remember, we created uh, some bitmap images that were 100 by 100. So uh, let's uh, style the first cell, cell 11, and give it a width of 100 pixels, and give it a height of 100 pixels too, so that the image fits nicely in there. Uh, let's also style the border style. The border style attribute allows us to set what style of border that we want for each one of the four borders of a cell. The, there's, there's four values. The first one, cells, 
the style of the upper border. Uh, the second value is the style for the right border, then the bottom, and then the left. So we, we want none for the top, solid for right, bottom, solid, left, none. Then we want the width of the borders to be 5 pixels and the color to be blue. Let's add some text to the first cell, cell 11. Let's save it and reload, see what we get. All right, there it is, uh, the sum text, and we have the border to be solid on the right border and the bottom border. Let's um, do the same thing for uh, cells that have exactly the same styling, like uh, the one right next to it also has a border at the bottom and a border at the right. And um, let's see, the, the four top left corners have the same styling. So we have uh, cell 11, cell 12, then cell 21, and cell 22. They all have the same style of border at the bottom and border at the right. Um, let's add some content in there so that uh, it does render something uh, in, the, in the tables. Let's save it and let's reload the page to see what we get. There we go. So the top four corners of the table have been styled to have borders on the right and borders at the bottom blue with five pixel width. Uh, let's do the, the next uh, cells that are the rightmost cells and the bottom most cells. They also have similar styles to each other. So let's uh, style the, the rightmost cells, which is uh, 1, 3, and also cell 2, 3. Also have the same style that basically what we're going to have is just border at the bottom. And the, and, and the, and, and the bottom most cells are going to have uh, just um, the borders on, your, on their right. They're going to be styled also solid. All right, here we go. We have um, we have styled these to have all the same height and width. The the, the most the rightmost and the bottommost they have also the same width and height of 100 by 100. Okay, now let's style the borders. And so let's copy what we have already for the top left four corners and let's paste it here. Now the, the this changes the the uh, which uh, if it's the top left right. Or bottom uh, border styles they, they do change for the rightmost I believe it's what it's uh, none at the top none at the right and we want a solid at the bottom there it is and for the uh, left uh, bottom most we want this okay there we go here we, here we have it uh, we're, we're very close to what we want uh, let's see what else uh, let's remove the border and let's save that see what we get there Reload. There it is. So oh, that looks much better. We have those white uh, lines in between that we want to remove, and the way we do that is we go. We can style the attribute of the table tag and say that we want the spacing between the cells and the padding inside of the cells. We want it to be zero. Uh, this is the spacing of the content that you put inside of the cells. Uh, let's save that. Let's reload. We want to remove those white borders in there. There we go. That looks much, much better. Now, we don't want that content, you know, some text or X or whatever. So let's, let's remove those, these over here. Let's, uh, let's remove all that. We only had added it because by default, the table, if you don't have anything in there, just renders as just one big white space, which you don't see. So let's see. Let's remove it. Let's save it. And, and let's uh, verify that indeed, if you remove that and reload, the table doesn't doesn't display at all. So we have to add something in there, but something that is not visible. So some kind of spacing. So there is one special type of space, which is the non-breaking space. And this is how you type it, saying that this is a, an actual space that you do want it to render. Uh, we're saying that this is an empty space. We have to specifically say that it's an empty space. Let's read oh, there it is. So it does have some space in there, some, some um, and just to tell the browser that we want to render even though this is empty. Okay, so let's put put that in there. Let's save. Let's reload and see that indeed it is drawing. There we go. So, okay, so we did the first two rows. Let's do the la very last row. Let's paste that in there again. There we go. Paste, paste, paste. Let's save and reload the page. See, there we go. We have the three rows. Great.